Welcome back to the channel, folks. Today I'm going to talk about how much I paid for my 2020 Toyota Prius Prime, as well as the gas mileage I've been able to achieve and my charging cycles. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. Yeah. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. We the one. Darkness, I rose up. Golden my soul, it's a gold rush. Yeah, yeah. Honor and freedom, my toast up. Kicking game on the snare drum. Hard on the beat, let it bleed out like sacrifices. Cut it open, emotions. Spilling like oil and coasting. Therapy for my mental, I'm pinning a pistol and shoot down the criticisms. Individually, I heard the voices that told us. Yeah, yeah. Throw dirt on my name. Alright, so wish first, me thank you so much for all the views on my last couple videos. You guys are great. I would have never thought this many people would be this interested in this Prius but while I merge into the carpool lane to avoid traffic which I get to do with no one next to me this is awesome um, I will share with you how much I paid for this car so a few of you have asked so I thought maybe everybody else wants to know so the sticker price on this was about thirty one thousand dollars and I paid just under 29,000. I mean, it was like 28,9 or 28,875 or something like that. And that's not as cool as, so, you know, I didn't get this humongous discount or anything like that. But um, if you ask the dealer, I stole the car, they gave it away, they made no money. This is what they all say. I, I kind of believe they did a good job, good deal, because I called a lot of dealers and I got a lot of prices. And when I shared around what I got from these guys at Gosh Toyota, I mean, everybody said you should just go buy it from them. So, look, shout out to Gosh Toyota. These guys did a great job. You know, I don't want everybody to line up for, you know, free deals. But, on, you know, they did a great job. And I think I, I'm confident, relatively confident, that I could not have gotten a better deal from any other dealership in California because I talked to most of them. So, I'm happy with the price that I got for the car. Um, but it's important, I mentioned, which will trigger, trigger some of you, is that I financed this thing and I financed it for 84 months. Yes, this is where you trolls begin to pound me and tell me what a financial um, imbecile I am. But 84 months at 4.99% interest. That is incredible. So do the math. I put zero money down. I didn't write a check for anything. Financed everything in. I got a payment of $442 a month. I did the math on the payment and based on 2,000 miles a month that I'll drive and the fact that Toyota pays for the first two years of services that my cost of ownership putting gas in this car every 10 days of sometimes, you know, seven, but generally about every 10 days of about $36, $37. I figured the math that I'm paying somewhere around 25 26 cents a mile for this car that is incredible considering that i'm getting paid and anybody who buys this and drives over business like i do you're going to or for commuting you're going to pay um you're going to get 58 cents a mile which is the federal government's guidelines so i'm getting paid 58 cents per mile on mileage reimbursement from my company so if you do the math, I'm doubling my money. I don't know another investment that would double my money. So I have to drive, I have to go places for work. So in this car versus any other car, I'm, I'm getting paid to drive it. Um, that, to me, that's a great deal. So why did I go 84 months? Because like credit cards, I don't pay the minimum payment. I'll pay more since I'm making a lot, big months, I'll throw another double payment on it and I'll get the thing paid down. But my main reason why is everything I read about this car from, uh, from the 100,000 mile 10 year or nine year, what is it, 10 year warranty or something, 10 year warranty on the drivetrain, electrics, electronics, electric battery, means that the services on this car and the brakes and everything else, I mean, they're minimal. They're minimal, they're so minimal that it's gonna take years before I start realizing any financial cost other than just driving it and filling it up with gas, maybe putting tires on it. But I look up the tires and they're like 
bicycle tires, they're cheap. So really the cost of ownership, even if it got up to 30 cents a mile, I'm still making money. And I still plan to pay this thing off way before the 84 months. But I wanted to be profitable month one, which I am now. And what a beautiful thing that is. But at 4.99% interest, I did the math on my mutual funds, my 401k, and other investments. And while I could have easily stroked the check and bought this car, it made much more sense to keep my cash, making me money, making me 13.49% in one of my blue chip investments and as low as 5 to 7% on my money in my other investments. Now, and I have my cash that's relatively liquid. Maybe not the 401k, but my other cash is relatively liquid if I needed it and I'm not bearing it into an investment that's depreciating rapidly. It's actually going up in value because compound interest is a pretty powerful thing. This car I plan to keep for the rest of my life. I can't imagine any reason to get rid of this car for what it costs and the money I'm making on it and the fact that they could change the styling and it wouldn't really change how I feel about the car. I don't care if suddenly they you know, redesigned the entire car. I didn't buy the car because of how it looked. I bought the car because of what it's capable of doing. Short of them coming out with one that gets you know, 100 miles to the gallon, which I can't imagine happening anytime real soon, this thing is getting, well, I'm averaging 62.3 miles to the gallon. Um, I'm happy with it. And I can't imagine I'm going to have to get rid of it. I'll just keep it, keep it in the family and let it get to be down to where it's worth nothing. But it's something we have that can be driven around and throw fishing gear in it someday and and who cares, uh, you know, what happens? I mean, heck, I can throw lawnmowers on a sucker. I mean, at some point, it's not going to matter. So the fact that I'm never going to get rid of it means I'm never going to realize the actual loss. I'm going to get my value out of it. I'm going to get everything I paid for it out of it. So the investment's not bad. You get what you pay for really falls in a line here. I'm going to pay a little bit of interest, really, really a very little bit of interest, and my cost of ownership of this car is going to be minimal. So why I financed for such a long period, drop that payment way low. Why I didn't put any money down, I have no upfront cost in driving this car and I'm profitable month one. So that's what I paid for it. I hope that all makes sense. And if anybody with you know a bigger financial mind than I have, which is probably most of you, has some input, feel free to throw it in, in the uh, comments because I would love to see where I went wrong on this. I just don't see, based on how much I drive, and the reliability of this car, not to mention if I did sell it, this thing has the best resale value. I think it was like a five year crazy, you know, 57%, I mean, value that it holds. I mean, it's compared to all the other cars, was like 30% and 40%. So Toyota just, they kind of figured it out. There's just no reason why I would, you know, stroke a check for $30,000 and be out that cash and, uh, you know, when I get 4.99% interest. So that's why I bought it that way. All right, next, let's talk about the gas mileage. So I have been experiencing about, well, I can tell you it's about 60, right today, it's 62.2 miles to the gallon. But 1,800 miles, three tanks of gas, that's 30 miles per tank is what I'm into this thing for now. That's you know, maybe $36, $37 a tank. You can do the math on this. It's, you know, hundred and something bucks. It's really cheap, but you break it down. I'm averaging 60 miles to gallon, to the gallon. I texted the guy, the salesman that, um, he checked on me a week later, a couple weeks later. And he says, uh, so how you liking the car? And I wrote him back and said, you lied. You lied. This thing does not get 54 miles per gallon. That's an absolute lie. And then I waited till I saw the little three dots on the text message and I wrote back, it's actually getting like over 60 miles per gallon. So I love it when dealers lie to me to my benefit. Now some days and at, at a certain point I was averaging 84. So it just depends on the day and the heavy, heavy driving you're doing. If you're going uphill, downhill, how quickly you uh, exhaust your electric battery. But I'll tell you, averaging 60 miles per gallon compared to my Dodge, which was between 11 and 16 on a great day, and my BMW, which was between 19 and 21 on a great day. I mean, I'm still 
like three times better than driving either of those cars and I only have to put regular unleaded, not premium unleaded in this thing. And I don't have to go to the gas station and waste time standing there very often in my busy days. So that's cool. And I get to drive in the carpool lane, which doesn't seem to be working real well right now. But I played a video for you a minute ago, or I'll play it now, um, of my drive this morning where I saved all that extra time as well. So this thing is just awesome. So let's talk about charging cycles and the battery. So you only get 25, maybe 30 miles out of that battery that I've been experiencing. But every night I go home, I charge this thing up, I plug it in, and in the morning it's charged. It's about five and a half hours to fill it up completely to a full charge, and I just plug it in. And it's been about a month now, and I have I got my electric bill, and my electric bill's like, I mean, I, I can't see how it's any more than it's been normally. Now I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's $20 more than it would have been, but Honestly, it's the small battery in this car, so it's not its not like it's a Tesla 300-mile giant battery. This thing's not changing my electric bill dramatically. So um, I'll keep tracking it and pay attention and update you guys, but I can tell you right now, it's not changing anything. It's like I charge at night, so it's the probably the cheapest rates, and it's not summertime, so I'm not running the air conditioning and wash and dryer and everything at the same time. So I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's pulling a whole heck of a lot of juice out of it. So. Uh, based on the fact that when I charge it at a charge point um, charger out in the world, it's a couple bucks to fill the thing up. I got to think that maybe in a 30 day period, maybe it's 60 bucks a month more, 50 bucks more. I, you know, I don't know, but I figure there's got to be a markup at the charge point. So maybe it's even less than that. So maybe 30, 40 bucks more a month. So, so that's what I expect at my house bill. So I charge it up every night, and then when I leave, I use electric. If I'm around town on the weekends and I don't want to drive my Dodge around, and I just want to putt around and do some run some errands, I won't use any gas. I'll just go completely on electric, which is pretty cool. Um, but during the week when I'm commuting, I'll jump on the highway and I'll burn through 25, 30 miles on electric, and then I'll flip to gas, and that that helps. Now. If I'm out in the field and I see or I'm running errands or you know visiting offices or stop at the mall or something and there's a charge point charger, then I plug this thing in if there's an open stall. I plug it in and I make sure that when it's done charging, I move it. That way people with full electric cars who are driving around with anxiety all day long can actually have the charger, but I make sure this thing's charged up because it's so cheap. Certain times of the day, at least one of our offices, uh, we have a whole bank of charge point chargers. It's literally like a buck fifty or buck twenty. I mean, one day I, I still had thirty six, uh, or not thirty six, uh, thirty yeah, thirty six percent of my battery was charged. So I plugged it in. It was like ninety cents to to run it back up to full. So I maybe will spend three dollars a week, four dollars a week at chargers outside in the field and I don't even need to do that but if it's open and sometimes it's part it's really convenient it's parked right in front, they're put right in front of the businesses like at the malls and the parking structures etc then I'll go plug it in and top the thing off and get battery battery uh, life for a little bit another reason I do that is the car is very pleasurable to drive when it's in full electric mode it is so smooth so quiet I mean it's just awesome it makes you want an electric car kind of I just don't want to spend time at chargers but you know, here, if I'm gonna go inside somewhere anyways and there's a charger, I plug it in, hit my charge point um, app on the phone and it fills it up, it's 70 cents, 90 cents, a buck 50. Um, I think one day I went past the low charging cost, went to like three bucks, big deal. So maybe three to five bucks a week, add that to the cost. I'm still profitable on the car and I get to drive in electric mode more. So I hope that answers all of your questions. I. Uh, will be making more videos on this i'll also make some videos on my dodge again to keep you updated on that and then i'll take you car shopping with me in another few weeks because my bmw will be going back on the end of that lease soon and i will be free to go and shop for maybe my hellcat i don't know um, that means i have to trade in my scat pack but you know if i can get something like that that'd be pretty awesome and based on what I'm making on this car, that's this is going to pay for that car. So this is pretty awesome. So I'll take you along for that. 
with that, thank you so much for following my channel. Please like and please subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. All right, folks, so I'm going to pull up to my hotel tonight, and let's see if the valet come out to help me, because I'm in a Prius. They're going to think I'm an Uber driver. All right, let's pull in and see We're at the hotel. See if these guys come out. And I'm not gonna act like an Uber driver. I'm not gonna you know, pull to the right. I'm just gonna pull right in where I'm supposed to be. And watch this. He's, he's hesitating. He's not coming to my door. This dude is not coming to my door because he thinks I'm a freaking... You think I'm an Uber, huh? You think you thought I was an Uber? Yeah. <laughs> I was doing the test. It's me. I got the Dodge and the Beamer. I come here all the time. I love you guys. You take care of me. But this is my YouTube channel. I'm telling them you you go to hotels in a Prius, man. You guys just stand there, look like <laughs> it's all good. I still love you guys, but.